But never I say my pen dream TV. Pen dream TV there. I see them. You po. Now, Randy, what is Ghana's electoral landscape at the moment? And what is the implication of Alan's work? You see, for some time, Randy, there has been talk of the need for a third force. There are many people who have claimed that the NDC and the MPP are the same. And therefore, they yearn for a third force. And you see, sometimes an impression is created that there is no need for party political, and that having a duopoly in and of itself is a difficulty. But really, there is hardly any major or significant democracy in the world where you do not have a duopoly. Because invariably, the lines along which divisions occur in the country's politics are few. The differences in ideology are not very, very steep. And in the modern world, many, many, many organizations or political organizations are trying to move into the center. Those who are on the extremes are actually deemed as parias and are avoided. Today, it is not very fashionable to be ultra-leftist or ultra-rightist. And many, many, many people are shifting to the center in a bid to be more responsive to the demands of the time. So increasingly, the lines become blurred between ideological halves in any political terrain. So the mere existence of a duopoly is not a difficult Randy, in the US, the Grand Old Party or the Republican Party and the Democrats are the dominant forces. People don't know that they are, there's actually a communist party in the US. There's a communist party in the US. Randy, there's a Greens in the UK. They have, indeed, in the elections that Theresa May contested as Prime Minister, I saw someone who contested as a fish. He was actually dressed like a fish on the ballot paper. That is what he believed in. There are many political parties in the UK. There are many political parties in Germany. There are many political parties everywhere. But more often than not, you have two that are more prominent because of the way that things are organized in those various places. So the existence of the NDC and the MPP is not in and of itself a major difficulty. Perhaps you could argue that those of us in the political class must make making concessions that there are things that we could do much better to meet the hopes and aspirations of our people, especially our young people who dominate. Currently, they constitute about 60% of the Ghanaian population. So it is extremely important that we acknowledge that all around, there have been failures in the way that we have carried ourselves, in the way that we have managed the affairs of the country, and commit to doing better. Randy, that is where the difference arises between the NDC and the MPP. What has President Mara been saying, Randy? He has acknowledged that we have practiced this democracy for quite some time. The constitutional experiment, the democratic experiment has been on for the last 30 years or so. There have been shortfalls arising from weaknesses in our institutional arrangements. Therefore, he realizes the need to commit to carrying out far-reaching reforms at all levels in order to ensure that our state, our country, is fit for purpose and that it delivers the goods for our people, especially the young people of this country, who, under this government, have become increasingly despondent and desperate. And sometime last week, we all saw the manifestation of that when hundreds of them poured onto the streets to air grievances that they have about this government in particular and to some extent the general political environment. President Mama and the NDC recognize that. Really, that is why President Mama has committed himself to deep constitutional, political, and institutional reform. All those institutions whose work have been politicized, that we have lamented about, are going to see deep-seated reforms to ensure that they come into the modern era where their primary focus and function will be to respond to the needs, hopes, and aspirations of our citizens. We are not like the MPP that is insisting that everything is okay and are increasingly arrogant. They have dug in and are refusing to see the reality that they are leading this country into total and permanent destruction. And we need to pull back from the brink before it is too late. President Mama is making that commitment. Randy, he has for instance said that over the years, 
The matter of extra share has become topical. Ghanaians simply do not want a continuation of those payments. So he says, yes, I've heard you. I may have collected extra share when I was president. But there comes a time when one needs to look back and do things differently from how it has always been done. So I commit that myself and members of my government are not going to partake in the sharing of extra share anymore. Randy, what is President Akufado's response? What is the MPP's response? Only a few weeks ago, he inaugurated a committee to ensure the payment of Esgracia and other emoluments. Tone deafness. He has turned a deliberate blind eye to the desires of the people of Ghana. The people are saying that they don't want these monies paid anymore. President Akufado says he will pay it. You can go to hell. So he has set up a committee to do exactly what the people do not want. The people of Ghana have said that our government and public sector is simply too bloated and has become a drain on the public purse. President Akufuadu says he could not give a toss. In his first term, right, he appointed 125 ministers, a most unreasonable and unconscionable act. There was no justification for this, but he did it. And despite criticisms and demands for this to be reversed, he said he won't do it. What has President Mama committed to? He says, I've heard you. I will have around 60 ministers, definitely below 70, which is much smaller than what we have now. And that the phenomenon where the presidency becoming the, becomes the parking place for any and every political activist, to the extent that we have over 1,000 employees within the operations of the presidency, is going to come to an end. Randy, at the last check, there were over 338 political appointees at the presidency. Political appointees, not civil servants. President Obama says that phenomenon is going to come to an end and that he will not countenance this unnecessarily large number of people at the presidency who are really doing nothing except to draw salaries and attack political opponents. So he says, I will do something about it. Randy, President Obama has promised that our education sector is in crisis. At the last count, there are one million Ghanaian school children who do not have this. So they sit on the floor or they lie on their stomachs to receive education and tuition. And what quality of education can such a child have? President Obama says, I will commit to carrying out deep reforms within the education sector to ensure that things like this are removed. We won't have a situation where for six terms, capitation grant is not paid. For four years, we can't print textbooks. Randy, President Obama will not look the people of Ghana in the eye. And leave the basic needs like healthcare, education, and infrastructure, and go and dig a hole in the name of building the cathedral. Randy, he will not disrespect the people of Ghana to the extent that he will stand on a platform and tell them that at a time when we cannot buy vaccines for babies and they are dying from measles, his topmost priority is to build the cathedral. That is one of the greatest insults that President Kufadu has heaped on the people of Ghana. So they've got to do the already. People say that that whole cost fifty eight million dollars. It doesn't. It cost hundred and ten million dollars, which is one point two billion Ghana cities. They've paid fifty eight million dollars. The remaining fifty two million is held in certificates by the contractor, and it is due for payments. And you know that once the contractor has that, it is only a matter of time before he is paid. So President Kufaru has spent one hundred and ten million dollars digging a hole, and on the same road between Parliament House and the red roundabout. President Mahama demonstrated the difference between the MPP and the NDC. He put up a world class hospital, the Greater Accra Regional Hospital at Ridge. That is his official name. World class, where they are delivering cutting edge health services to the people of Ghana. He also put one up in the University of Ghana, a quaternary hospital, the highest standard hospital you can find in the whole of West Africa, and one of the best in Africa. Indeed, many people have come from abroad, gone to that facility, and left. With, with praise for the professionalism of the staff and the quality of healthcare that is delivered there. That is a difference, a clear difference. For those who say that there's no difference between the NDP and the NDC, that is it. Andy, one chooses to waste money, one chooses to be flagrant and disrespectful in the way that he wastes the public place of Ghana. The other one decides that I must do what matters most first before any other thing. Andy, one has a presidential judge which is fully fitted and can cater to his travel needs. He says he doesn't like it. He wants a plusher one. But that's what he's been using.
Oh, Randy, it was after intense public backlash. Randy, he didn't need that. When that aircraft broke down, he had the option of going commercial. Or at most, renting something that was economical, that was in tune with the times. Randy, I've said this before in your program, I'll repeat it. President Amma has sat in the economy class from Frankfurt to Accra before. It didn't take anything away from him as president. He could also have decided that the presidential aircraft was not available. So he will rent an ultra expensive $30,000 an hour aircraft. He didn't do it. He chose to fly economy from Frankfurt to Accra. That is the hallmark of a leader. You see, Randy, it will be presumptuous of me, you know, to sit here and pretend that everything was perfect under the NBC. Randy, there, there is nothing like a perfect government. Never. There will never be. When President Obama becomes president again in 25, he will not be a perfect government. Randy, what I can stick my neck out for and see is that he will be a much better president and leader than President Akufuadu. Because it is within his nature to care about our country and put in the work, the shifts that matters. Many people speak about doing so and say that, oh, there was no so in this time. Randy, you and I know that doing so was not a problem that President Mama created. Many people don't know. Indeed, only two days ago, I read on Twitter someone who was 12 years old when doing so happened said that he has so much difficulty and that is why he does not like the MDC. Of course, at 12 years, his only frame of reference is what his parents tell him. He was unaware that under before we slept in darkness for one and a half years. I was a student at the time, Randy. The MPB solution at the time was to send pastors to Akosobo to pray. President Ahmed's solution was to fix it permanently. You see, unlike President Akufuado and his sidekick, Puppet Baunya, who are running away from responsibility on the damage they have inflicted on the economy. President Mama took responsibility for doing so. Randy, on 24th December 2015, the load shedding officially ended. Of course, there were residual power outages, which we still have now, Randy. About only yesterday, there was a major outage in several parts of Accra. But Dumso was resolved comprehensively through major investments and around the clock work put in by President Mahama. But you will call also, Randy, that in 2015, when we had difficulty with the city, President Mahama went to Parliament, took responsibility, and announced measures to ensure that that end ended. But where is Baumia? And he has fled, ran away. So, on top of criminal incompetence and mismanagement, he is also displaying cowardice. He doesn't have the heart to stand up and be counted. He does not have the heart to level up with the people of Ghana and tell them that yes, there may be difficulties, but I am fit for purpose to address it. He has run away. He does not want to be associated with those things because he knows that politically it will be damaging. President Obama did not run away. He went to Parliament and took responsibility that I am the leader, so I will fix it. I will not blame others. But what do we see? They blame any and everything apart from themselves, from the criminal mismanagement that has brought these hardships and difficulty to Ghanaian youth who are protesting. So there is a marked difference between the NDC and the MPP. I get the impression that Alan wants to tap into that, what do you call it, disenchantment. But Randy, the obvious point that I'm sure his critics will raise is that he has been part and parcel of this administration. In fact, my friend here serves in some capacity on the economic management team. So he has told us about Alan's involvement in the economic management team. When Baumia was shooting off his mouth, and blabbing about some phantom incompetence that he did not have anyway, and said that he had a solid team to manage the economy. Alan's name was mentioned, and it was mentioned with emphasis. So he has been part of the difficulty. I am not too sure whether or not he represents the kind of hope that the Ghanaian youth are looking for. Because when you see, to be able to do that, you have to do what two things. You have to be extremely charismatic, somebody like Rollins, and be radically different from the city school. I do not see those two traits in Mr. Alan Chemantin. So his ability to rally Ghanaian youth around his course is in considerable doubt. And therefore, I do not think that people need to get ahead of themselves. You could say that it is early days yet, so we should observe what happens in between. But I'm not sure that he is responding exactly to the needs and aspirations of the people of Ghana. But Randy, you know, it is important that we raise this point. Because you see, there are many people out there 
who are overlooking a number of factors when discussing our political terrain today. Yes, as I've indicated before, there have been difficulties with the way that the political class have run this country in the last 30 years. And there's definitely need for change. That same panorama is promising. But the fundamental issues have to be corrected. You see, there are two classes of people. There is the disappointed MPP braggart who has been fed a staple as he has grown up of prejudice and hate and lies about the NDC. There are some of them who are actually told that because of the region they come from, the home they come from, they must vote MPP. So they have invested everything in the MPP. Not that the MPP had any tangible offense. In fact, any careful observer of the political landscape in 2016 would have been all too aware that Akufuado had not shown enough capacity to do anything meaningful. And we have been borne out by the results. But there are those who will not listen because of where they come from. They go and vote for Akufuado and Bawumia. They come in and deliver disastrous outcomes. Meanwhile, they are the two people who have been the luckiest. Ghanaians have given them far more resources than all other governments put together. And at the last reckoning, they had had over 800 billion Ghana cities at their disposal. In the eight years that the NDC was in power, we had only 248 billion. But look at the qualitative improvements we made to the lives of Ghanaians and see what they are delivering now. 800 billion Ghana cities. Yet, they have recorded the worst economic outcomes perhaps ever in our history. Look at where inflation is now. Right? Look at the dollar. Look at our debt. 600 billion Ghana cities and beyond. We cannot pay. Over 100 billion Ghana cities belonging to bondholders has been withheld. And they are suffering unspeakable hardships. Right? These days, I'm sure you suffer it. The kind of people who send you messages asking you for small amounts of money shock you. Given their stature, you know that if they were not desperate, they would not come to you for anything. But times are so hard that everybody is really under the pressure. People are on their knees and they are begging. Look at the nepotism that Pesach Kufado is practicing. The last time I heard one of his daughters say that his father, his father, I beg your pardon, has delivered sterling outcomes. And of course, if overnight you come into wealth and you own a restaurant valued at millions of dollars, why would your father not be stellar in your eyes? If overnight, as they say in Akan, we tell Anka one Anka, one president builds a terminal and your father just gives you the biggest and most lucrative shop in there, you will say such things. But the people of Ghana know that the sort of corruption, the plain thievery that President Kufado has supervised is unprecedented in our history. The nepotism he has practiced, the feeling that Ghana and its resources is a family heirloom and he can do as he pleases with it has never happened in our history. Randy, the violence that he has supervised, the terrorism that he has encouraged in this country is unprecedented, has never happened. So people who invested their confidence in him and have operated on the basis of prejudice against the NDC do not have any explanation and they go about promoting a certain narrative that the NDC and the MPP are the same. And it cannot be true. Mm. I admit <clears throat> that yes, there are things that we could have done much better. Things that we could really have done much better. There were things that happened under us that are less than desirable. And we should strive never to have them repeated. Indeed, President Obama has made that firm commitment. And I am absolutely certain that he will deliver. Randy, and then there are those who genuinely want to see far more than they are seeing. They also engage in the narrative that the NDC and the MPP are the same. There are some of them who even want our constitution entirely jettisoned. They want a new constitution. They want things done in a certain way. They want some deep-seated reforms that they've not seen. We must acknowledge those people, even as we expose the charlatans who yesterday were propping up Akufuadu. Look, Wendy, what possible reason did the electorate have voting for Akufuadu again in 2020? You could argue that in 2016, they were dissatisfied with the NDC. But Wendy, in 2020, Recently, there was some uproar about the approval of some ministers that President Kufado had nominated. And in 2020, sections of the electorate who are now saying we are the same knew that President Kufado had appointed 125 ministers. They still went ahead to vote for him. When he comes and appoints it, he says that you are angry that the opposition should have stopped him. 
But he had 125 when you were going to vote. You still voted for him. Randy, you had a president who, during a by-election, put weapons in the hands of terrorists to go and attack innocent Ghanaians who were only participating in the election. You still went ahead to vote for him. You had a president who had done all the, look, all the economic difficulties we are having today stem from terrible decisions they made between 2017 and 2020. We were all aware. Look, some of the issues that are being raised today, many of the matters that are forming the subject of the protests we are seeing today were raised by the minority. When we raised them, people were telling us that we were not an alternative. When we saw that the country was crashing and we raised it, we were told that we were not an alternative. And that Akufado and Baumia, we had not seen their lives before. They were the best thing to have happened to the world apart from sliced bread. And they went to vote for them. And yet, after the terrible decisions they made between 2017 and 2020, hit us in the face and we were knocked off our perch and we were heading for destruction, you say we are the same. Right? We can never be the same. We will never be, even President Mahmoud's mannerism, his posture, can never be the same as Mr. Kufado. President Mama will never, Randy, take $110 million and go and be the whole name of Bede Kachinga. When, they, look, look at the work that the NDC did in education. As I speak to you, Randy, there are 5,400 schools and fees. 5,400. According to latest research by an education coalition. When we were in power, we had 3,000. We moved over 2,000 of them before we left power. When we came to power in 2009, Ghana was one of the countries with the poorest patient hospital birth ratio. By the time we left power, we had jumped to second, only after Egypt. Because of the investments we made, when we came to power, only 54% of Ghanaians had access to water. By the time we left, it had jumped to 7 to 6%. Just around the same number, 54% had access to electricity. By the time we left, it had crossed 80%. So the kind of work we did, the sacrifices we made, the concessions that we were willing to make, our appreciation of the plight of people, right? When people demonstrated during Occupy Flagstar House, the government of the day did nothing. Look, there were people in the police who were jittery. They made contact with governments trying to get a feel of what was supposed to happen, whether or not they should crash it or allow it. They were told in all oh, certain that I should leave people alone to demonstrate. When the people got to the Flagstar House, they, their leaders were allowed to go and present a petition to government. Randy, a day after that, myself, I was instructed to respond to the issues that had been raised and indicate what we were doing specifically to address the concerns that they had done. I did that in my capacity as a deputy minister for information. So we responded, and so much work was going on at the time that by 2016, the fruits of this had become clear. Randy, when we went into HIPIC, sorry, I beg your pardon, COVID. Was it not President Mama's investments that sustained us as a country? Where would we have been if President Mama had not made those investments? Okay. So this claim that we are all the same mm. does not really have a foundation. Mm. And you see, when people engage in this discussion, the prejudice that people have been fed on for decades, you know, sometimes tribalism. I come from a particular region. And as for that region, our party is this party. Mm. So no matter what the other party does, I won't see it. If you, think, if you come to the discussion with a closed mind, and prejudice. You will say things like this, but you have to be objective. Number two, right? There's nothing wrong with the duopoly. What political parties must do is to reinvent themselves all the time. Because times change, and as times change, you move with it. You see, Kufa tried to do that with the MPP. So they moved from a right wing party and came to the center. That was when they brought all those so called social interventions that they made noise about. Some of them were done, some of them completely terribly implemented. It was an acknowledgement that times were shifting. But Akufado has taken them back to shallow populism, corruption, maladministration, and incompetence. And on top of that, he wants to install his puppet, Baumia, to watch over his back and ensure that he is not held to account. Andy, that is not going to happen. You see, they have come from a state where they were seen as an Akan dominated party because of their own conduct over the years. Randy, for the abundance of doubt, you see, it is not somebody who has said this. Yao Osafu Mafu, he is currently senior minister. He is one of the most important stalwarts he of the He is no longer senior minister. Oh, I beg your pardon. Yes, he was senior minister, but he was finance minister that before. And he is a major stalwart. He celebrated his 80th birthday a while ago. Randy, he is on record 
to have said that as far as the NPP is concerned, it is only people from five Akan regions who, in his view, produce all the resources of this country who should lead that party. It is not, I'm, I'm not the one who said this. So if people believe that that is what you are, it is based on your own conduct over the period. We have not had any such baggage. Randy, we've broken every possible silly. Perhaps the only one we've not done is to have a female as our flag bearer. And that will happen because we have had a female as a running mate. And by God's grace, if we win, she will have a female as our vice president. So we have, we in the NDC have broken every possible silly. Where you come from does not matter any more than the color of your eyes in the NDC. But the MPP, they have intentionally over the years cultivated that image for themselves. Now, they want to bring us somebody whose only utility is that it will enable them to say that they are not an account party anymore. Meanwhile, when you examine his credentials, he is the poster boy of the criminal mismanagement of this country. I'm talking about here. The role that he has played in the destruction of this country can never be overlooked in the analysis. So they should not think that they can just grandfather him onto their ballot paper and then people of Ghana will queue and go and vote for him. Look, the young people who are protesting, they are extremely intelligent people. They know what the facts have been. Sometimes the narrative is distorted. But in the main, they are fighting for what they deserve. Baumia and Akufuado have conspired to darken their future. And they are not going to reward that incompetence. It is up right. to us right. in the NDC to position ourselves properly right. in order that we convince them that we have a much better program for them. And that will be done. And indeed, our record even shows it. Look, there is not okay. a single we sector. Right, give me just one minute. There is not a single sector in this our country where the MPP beats us. But we are willing to improve. We are willing to acknowledge that there are systemic problems some of which we could not address the last time when we were in power. But we are committed to addressing those and we will do them. All right. But in all, I think that Alan's resignation is not surprising. I think it is still early days yet to gauge the impact it will have on our political landscape. But as for the MPP, it is destined to affect them. Right. And it will hasten their decline into a position. Uh, David Kama, I may not send him to the assembly. Now, so far, so good. Say open online portal at work Ghana. Ah, you can share, you can follow, you can comment here. To my best of knowledge, without any biases, I append them to you. My name is Pendream TV. Pendream TV, dear, I see them. You po.